This ministry tends to be a little more on the academic teaching side than on the emotional preaching side. If you prefer that, you will love our delving into Genesis because I will address many of the atheistic objections to the Genesis account of creation. Before we do that, let me address the purpose of apologetics. Do not frustrate yourself by thinking you have the intellectual capacity to convince a single non-believer. The natural person does not accept the things of the Spirit of God, for they are folly to him, and he is not able to understand them because they are spiritually discerned. This spiritual blindness is partially our natural condition due to inheriting the fallen condition of Adam, but it is also a willful refusal to accept the truth and thus God hardens us even more so that we cannot see what is obvious. For even though they knew God, they did not honor him as God or give thanks, but they became futile in their speculations and their foolish heart was darkened. Professing to be wise, they became fools and exchanged the glory of the incorruptible God for an image in the form of corruptible man and of birds and four-footed animals and crawling creatures. Therefore, God gave them over in the lust of their heart to impurity, so that their bodies would be dishonored among them. For they exchanged the truth of God for a lie and worship and serve the creature rather than the creator who is blessed forever. Am I telling you that there is no point in communicating with the skeptic? No, not at all. We are most assuredly commanded to. Then Jesus came to them and said, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you. And surely I am with you always to the very end of the age. Did you catch that? We are commanded to go and to teach and to make disciples, but it isn't under our power, or as the Bible phrases it, in our own name, but in His name, under the power of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, because surely He is with us to the very end of the age. So, bad news is, you can convince no one about their need for God or the truth of His gospel. Good news, no, great news actually, God can, and He is with us, empowering us to do so through His Holy Spirit. So, what does this mean in practical terms? First, for we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Wherefore, take unto you the whole armor of God, that ye may be able to withstand in the evil day, and having done all, to stand. We need to always remember that this battle is a spiritual one, not a physical one, nor an intellectual one. 